UFC 276 weigh and recap show, full card predictions, and the betting breakdown. Looking forward to talking about this one a final time after seeing the fighters on the scales. Make sure you guys smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, turn on the post notifications as well, and uh, if you really enjoy the content, make sure to share the video. Let's jump into the first fight of the night. It is Jessica Rose Clark and Julia Stolarenko. Earlier on in the week, I have been on Jessica Rose Clark. I do think she's going to beat Stolaranko here, regardless of the scales. Both girls are on weight. Stolaranko, she's a decent fighter, but I do think Rose Clark is superior with her pressure, her clinch work. I think that she's going to have the better offensive wrestling of the two. Stolaranko could be dangerous from the bottom, and Rose Clark could get caught up into something. We'll look at the official weigh-in. Stolaranko came in in very good shape. And then there is Jessica Rose Clark, who looks very good as well. As far as size, statistically, Stolaranko has a very small height edge here, but I don't think it'll be super substantial. Rose Clark is not a bet, though. I have no interest in throwing money down on her. I'm going to pick her on a very competitive decision. Stolaranko could be a live underdog, but you look at the lines of this fight. There's no intrigue for me to play it. Rose Clark's best line is minus 140, Stolyaranko plus 140, so if you're dog attacking, you're not getting a huge underdog, um, and then if you're playing Rose Clark, you're dealing with a riskier favorite, I think she can get it done on the scorecards, I think we're going over the 2.5, that's minus 225 best value, I think that would probably be the best pick if I had to give you a bet on this one, I don't really like too much else, we can look towards Stolyaranko by submission, that will be sitting at around plus 410. Maybe if you're craving that Hail Mary uh, on this ladies fight to start the night off. But personally, I am not. I'm going to go Jessica Rose Clark for the win by a decision over Stolyaranko. But we have to worry about a questionable fight IQ and mistakes from Rose Clark getting her caught in something here. So the betting side, personally leaning off of it. Next fight, Jessica I and Macy Barber. I do believe Jessica I is going to lose this bout. I mean, she's 35, Macy 11 years younger than her at 24 years of age. I mean, she's definitely a rising contender who's improving a lot. I mean, we've been on Macy all week long. Uh, the scales here, we'll check them out. Both girls made weight without issue. There's Macy Barber. Doesn't look very dehydrated on the scale either. Jessica I doesn't look too bad. Uh, I think both girls had sustainable weight cuts. Nothing too difficult for them. But I think Macy Barber, difference maker, is going to be her youth. I think she's faster, moves better. Uh, I think she's going to be stronger in clinch positions. I think she has a physical strength edge and definitely the better grappling of the two. Jessica i has got a decent stand-up game. She's not a bad fighter. I mean, in her prime, she's fighting for the belt, obviously losing it. But I don't think it's her time against a young contender like Barber. I just think Macy's going to put a high pace on her and beat her. I'm going to say decision for Macy Barber with uh, pretty good confidence in this one. Looking at the lines, minus 274 for Barber, I plus 250. If we look at an over, over two and a half rounds, minus 275 is the best value line. I think it does go over two and a half. I think the first two fights both are going over. Barber by decision, minus 115 best value. I don't think the props are worth playing. The odds are wide in this one. Um, and they make it a, a tough line to touch really here. I personally am going to sit, <coughs> excuse me, sit out of this one. Uh, but we are going Macy Barber for the win. I think she'll take it on the cards and win a decision against Jessica. Next fight of the night. Things get more exciting here. It's Uriah Hall, Andre Muniz. I've been on Muniz all week long. The scales are going to have no factor unless Muniz somehow, you know, showed up maybe 20 pounds overweight. Even then, I'd say more likely for him to win. Muniz, I really believe, is going to get this thing to the ground. And I think he's going to finish Uriah Hall on the mat. We look at Muniz. He's lean, shredded, ready to rock. Uriah Hall still in pretty good shape. I just don't think Uriah has a shot here. I think he's going to be taken down because Muniz is not a bad jujitsu wrestler. He has very good level changes. Not a bad striker either, has decent hands for sure. Uriah Hall, definitely the more explosive and dangerous kicker by a long shot. But I think Muniz is going to avoid any crazy attack from Uriah at this point. And I think that Muniz gets him to the mat. I think he can submit him 
from multiple positions. I could see the arm bar because, I mean, right now, Muniz is the arm bar king, but I wouldn't be surprised if he got the rear naked choke as well. I like Andrew Muniz to win the bout. And I am going to say submission in the first round. I do think he taps Uriah early here. Uriah Hall is a big underdog, plus 290. Muniz minus 320 as the favorite. We look at under two and a half rounds, minus 155. I am confident that it goes under two and a half rounds. I don't think that would be a bad play. I like Muniz to win by sub. That is around minus 112 best value, so no plus money on it. But I do think that's how he does get it done. Win by submission. Andre Muniz, he's going to beat Uriah Hall in this spot. And I really think he's a middleweight contender to keep an eye on moving forward. <coughs> Next fight of the night, Brad Tavares versus Drikas Duplessis. Very exciting fight here. Earlier on in the week, I have been on Drikas Duplessis on weight for both guys. The skills are, are not a concern for a lot of matchups here. I'm not going to lie to you guys. But there is Drikas looking in very good shape. Brad Tavares looks good as well. He's got the blonde hair. But I think blonde Brad is getting slept. I think Drikas will continue his finishing streak and... I mean, the guy's never gone distance for a win. He's never won a fight by decision. Drikas Duplessis is kill or be killed. Seven wins by KO, nine by sub. I think he's going to knock Brad Tavares out. But if they do go to the mat, don't doubt Drikas on the floor either. Tavares is a well-rounded generalist, but nothing stands out as amazing. But he holds that back-end spot by being difficult to finish, solid takedown defense, quality kickboxing game. Drikas, if he's really that upper level should win by KO here and I'm going to predict that he does I'm going knockout I'm thinking second round KO here for Drikas Duplessis as far as the line minus 142 for Drikas Tavares plus 132 I think we're going under under two and a half minus 115 best value plus 110 Duplessis wins by KO TKO about plus 200 value best line I like Drikas Duplessis for the W. Let's go. Let's ride with him. And I think that he gets it done by knockout here. Sleeping Brad Tavares. Let's see if Drikas is real. I believe he is. Next one. Ian Gary, Gabe Green. There is some concern for a lot of folk on uh, the Ian Gary pick side. I am going to be riding Ian Gary here. And I have been uh, all week long. But Gabe Green's not a diff is not an easy out. He's a difficult out. Very good shape. Huge traps. He's well built and he's not an easy guy to put away. There is Ian Gary, who looks in very good shape as well, I must say. I think Ian Gary's going to have an advantage from striking from distance. I think he's going to control the range fairly well. If they do start fighting inside of the close range and clinch, I do think Gabe Green's dangerous with body punches. And also, I think he has some powerful hooks in that close distance. But I think Ian Gary should be able to manage uh, the range. I think he should be able to keep. Green off of him for the most part. If he is backed up against the cage and getting controlled a bit, I could see him reversing position on uh, Gabe Green. And at the very least, I don't really see Gabe Green doing a ton of successful wrestling offense here. I think Gary will be on his feet, even if he's getting backed up against the cage. I feel like he and Gary to win. I'm going to say decision, though. I got to respect what I've seen from Gabe Green's durability. Um, and he tends to be able to come back. He's a very resilient guy. So if Gary goes crazy on him, he could get himself hurt. I don't believe he will. I think Gary will be poised and patient and I say he wins a decision over Gabe Green now looking at the line Gary minus 170 Gabe Green is plus 160 I think we're going over here over two and a half minus 120 I like over one and a half more so at minus 240 because there is a shot for Ian Gary to get a KO he is a pretty slick puncher it's just not super likely here I'll list off Gary by KO out of curiosity it is plus 300 I'm riding with him, though, to win by decision. That line is sitting at just plus 210, which is actually not too bad either. But I like money line, minus 170, Ian Gary. Maybe a parlay piece if you're looking for one. I expect uh, the future to get it done over gifted Gabe Green. Next bout of the night, Legends matchup, Cowboy Cerrone, Jim Miller 2. The first fight, Cowboy destroyed Jim Miller. That was many years ago now, and Jim Miller has... I feel like age like fine wine, Cerrone's wearing it a bit more. I mean, it's also fighting the best of the absolute best. Cerrone ran into a lot of trouble getting knocked out in you know multiple fights at lightweight. Now, we're up at 170, which is not natural for Jim Miller. It could be a concern. I'm still going to ride with Jim Miller. I've been riding with him all week long. I got to ride with the guy who looks better at this point. 
Cowboy Cerrone is always going to be extremely dangerous. And if he can get his kicks going, those high kicks, especially prime Cowboy, next level. Body kicks as well. Front kicks. I mean, Cowboy's kicking game is much better than his boxing game. But I feel like his boxing game has actually diminished a lot in recent years. Whereas... Jim Miller's boxing, I think, has gotten better. I think Jim Miller can hurt Cowboy in this fight. I'm very torn on method of victory. On the money line last night, I was leaning towards decision. Previously, I was leaning towards knockout. I'm going to lean at decision, but I definitely could see the KO for Jim Miller, especially if he touches up Cowboy and Cowboy starts weathering and breaking a bit. It's at 170, so that's going to be interesting for Miller, who's not a naturally big guy even at 55, but at 70, he's not even cutting any weight. Size edge leads Cowboy Cerrone. He does have to win the first one. We'll check him out on the scales. Let me put this back here. There is Cowboy Cerrone, the legendary smile. There is Jim Miller looking a little bit thick. I don't like the way Miller looks on the scales. He looks a little chubby. This is chunky Miller. He's not shredded out. I mean, he's fighting at 170, natural weight. Concerning fight, odd matchup. I'll ride Jim Miller for the win. If it was lightweight, I'd be much more confident though, but I'm going to stick with my guns on Jim Miller. As far as the line, the odds have kind of dropped uh, for Jim. He was upwards of a minus 200 range. Minus 165 Miller best value, plus 168 for Cowboy Cerrone. Looking at the overs and unders. Do I like over one and a half? I don't. I don't even want to touch the over. I don't really want to touch any bet in this fight. No, I just want to watch Cowboy Cerrone and Jim Miller throw down. If you had to touch something, do you want to touch <coughs> Excuse me, Miller by KO plus 310? Could happen. Miller by decision is also plus 330. If you like Cowboy by decision, plus 535. I just want to sit and enjoy this one. No bet for me. Maybe you want to touch the money lines of either side. I am going to ride Jim Miller as the official pick, though, to win against Cowboy Cerrone. Next fight is our featured prelim, and I think it's going to be an extremely good one. Brad Riddell, Jalen Turner, battle of real lightweights on the rise. I know Riddell lost the last one to Fiziev, but I mean, he's still close to uh, the ranked you know, upper echelon, really. Taking on Jalen Turner, a guy who is on a flow right now. I mean, destroying last one, Jamie Malarkey. He beat Josh Kulabeau. Who else has been? Yoros Madik, Brock Weaver. I mean, destroys most guys that they put him up against. But that Malarkey win stands out a lot to me. Because he, he beat up Jamie. And Jamie's a good fighter. I'm picking Jalen Turner to win. He has the reach edge, the height edge, natural, just longer and more athletic guy. Brad Verdell does have very good kickboxing base, city kickboxing fighter, but I just feel like Jalen Turner has the hybrid MMA style to pose a lot of problems to Brad Riddell. Finishers, though, and it's tricky to pick the result here, but I'm leaning towards Turner getting a decision. Would it be impossible for him to lock up a sub? I don't think it would. Let's look at the scales real quick, though. There is Jalen, who looks incredibly lean. Holy shit. And then there is Brad Riddell, who looks shredded as hell as well, ready to rock. Both these guys ready to go to war here. Uh, Jalen Turner is a slight favorite, minus 138. Riddell, plus 130. Let's see. The over is actually unlikely. It's minus 130 for the over one and a half. Over two and a half was upwards of plus 150. Looking at Turner to win by submission. Let's see what it's at. Plus 700 Turner by sub. Maybe. Maybe that's a Hail Mary snipe. If you guys are looking for one, I'll throw that one out there to you guys. Turner by decision plus 500. The prop bets on this one, very tricky. Method of victory for me is extremely cloudy here, but I think you have to lean it sub due to the length of the arms of Jalen Turner being a skinny guy. I could see him locking up a choke on Brad Riddell, especially if he has some success on the feet. I'm going to ride with it. It's uh, <coughs> excuse me. It's Jalen Turner for the win, the official pick. If I have to snipe you a prop, we're going Turner by submission at plus 700, but the money line is not a bad option. Good fight. Great featured bout of the night. Overall, great card, too. Let's jump to the main card. Opener, Pedro Munoz versus Sean O'Malley. If you guys haven't yet, make sure to smash the hell out of the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Pedro Munoz, Sean O'Malley. I am on Sean O'Malley. I've been on him all week long. I do believe he's going to look very good in this matchup and show new levels to his game because I think it's a constant improvement with Sugar Show. There's Sean O'Malley, lean, ready to go. 
there is Pedro Munoz. I saw some people in comment sections talking about how Sean O'Malley's not really a good trash talker. And I guess that is something interesting. O'Malley hasn't built his brand off being this great trash talker, but has reached this superstardom just with his persona, really. Uh, and I mean, he's blowing up with a huge YouTube channel with like over 400,000 subscribers now. So Sean O'Malley's doing it right. He's definitely doing it right as a fighter. He's becoming an influencer and a fighter. He's using the fighting platform to build his own brand. So genius Sean O'Malley. I'm going to bank on him winning by knockout. I think I think he's going to sleep Pedro. I think it's time Pedro gets knocked out. And I think Sean O'Malley is going to be the guy that puts him to bed here. He's going to catch him probably with a straight punch. And O'Malley is going to silence uh, Pedro. Not like Pedro saying a ton, but he's going to put him out. I think he's going unconscious here. And I feel like Sean O'Malley is going to have a stock jump incredibly. And I really think he's more ready for this moment now. There's Pedro on the scale right there. I mean, I, I just see the the size differential. I mean, obviously, they're not facing side by side, but just look at the body types, right? Pedro's 5'6". O'Malley's nearly six feet tall. There's a big difference in the range. Also, the kicking skills of O'Malley are very good. And even if Pedro is looking for those calf kicks, which he does extremely well, I think O'Malley catches him with straight punches and could hurt him. O'Malley's a big favorite, minus 280. Munoz, plus 255. If we look at the over... It's not it's not the move. The under is the move, I think. But it's not great. Plus 104. O'Malley, KO, TKO, plus 160. I like O'Malley by KO, TKO at plus 160. I think O'Malley wins by KO, TKO. Plus 160. O'Malley, knockout. I think that might be the touch, guys. I'm picking Sugar Show for the win. Not a terrible parlay piece if you're looking for one. And I expect... A great success for him. I'm excited. Very excited to see Sean O'Malley. Next fight should be a banger. It's Robbie Lawler, Brian Barberina. Coin flip fight as far as the pick goes. I'm um, still riding with Robbie Lawler. See him on the scale here, but there's Brian Barberina. Looks a little, he looked a little soft on the scale. Robbie Lawler looks decent, solid. I mean, he's 40 now. This is Robbie who's been through it. Robbie through the ringer at this point because he's been fighting forever, it feels now. Brian Barbarina is going to bring a pace and definitely look to touch him up. I think we're getting into a bit of a banger. The more dangerous guy is Robbie Lawler. Brian Barbarina doesn't have a ton of pop in his punches, but he sits down and bangs. Another thing with Brian Barbarina is he eats a good shot. Robbie Lawler, can he land the power punch? How is his output going to look? I'm going to pick Robbie Lawler to win by a decision. But if you had to say finishing ability, it, it still favors Robbie Lawler at 40 years of age. Lawler, slight favorite, minus 114. Barbarina, plus 110. Over two and a half rounds. About minus 172 best value. That's iffy. Lawler, KO, TKO, plus 385. I don't think he wins by knockout, though. Lawler by decision is plus 175. I like Robbie Lawler to win. I am going to pick him by decision, but I don't like the prop of it. If you are going to play it, maybe just touch it money line. I think we're in for a banger. I feel like it's going long. Maybe the over two and a half could be a sleeper play. Not amazing value, but it's not terrible. Another one, though, that it's like a veterans matchup. Maybe just sit back, enjoy the action, and I'll be riding with Robbie Lawler as the official pick in this one. Next bout, Sean Strickland who made some noise at the press conference, takes on Alex Pahea. Love this fight. Love, 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 love this fight. I have been extremely torn on picking this one for the entire week. Sean Strickland has a ton more MMA experience. Alex Pahea does have incredible striking, incredible athleticism, seems to be evolving his game quickly. <sighs> Sean Strickland's not going to be an easy out. I know my guy, Mike Finch, suggested that Sean Strickland is going to outbox Pahea. I don't know about that one. I see if Strickland wins his fight, he has to clinch. I see him landing takedowns if he's winning this fight. I think Pahea is going to have a good amount of success from range striking. I am fan inside of me riding Sean Strickland. I want Sean Strickland. But I have to pick Alex Pahea, man. I really think he's going to end up being too athletic, too rangy, and too explosive for Strickland with his stand-up game. And I think Strickland's going to have a hard time getting to the floor. I hope I'm wrong. This is one of the few picks where I just hope I'm wrong. I want to see Sean Strickland fighting for the title. I need to see Sean Strickland fighting for the title. I want to see that trash talk. Him and Izzy, that'd be special. The bet, my if you bet him, maybe throw it on Sean Strickland just to bless him with some good energy. I can't just ride off the fan pick, though. When I sat down and I film studied this fight, I saw Alex Pahea taking a competitive decision. 
I'm gonna stick with Pahea and I hope I'm fucking wrong. I, 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 I've never, I don't think I've ever said I really hope I'm wrong. This is one of them. I hope that I'm fucking wrong. But I'm going Pahea to win by a decision and I will be cheering for Sean Strickland the entire way through. And I hate that I'm picking Alex Pahea here. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. And I like Pahea a lot. I like him. Pahea looks scary, jacked, lean, made of wood. Sean Strickland looks incredible as well. It's a fucking fight, guys. It's a coin flip, really. Looking at the odds, Strickland slight favorite, minus 115. Bahia slight dog, plus 115. I do think we go over a round and a half. That's something I'm confident in. So maybe you play minus 170 over a round and a half. That's what I'd say to touch. Forget about picking between the two. If you're picking somebody to bet on, you want to throw money line down, like you're flipping a coin, man. Where's a fucking coin over here? I'll flip it and I'll tell you which side's going to take it. I, I thought I had a penny on the table here. I guess I don't. If I did have one, I would just literally, the, the official pick by a fucking coin flip, man. You know what? I'm doing it. Flip a coin. Let's see, guys. It's tails. Fuck, I didn't say which one's which. All right, we're going to do Sean Strickland head, Alex Pahea tails. Flip a coin. It's heads this time. God damn it. Sean Strickland might be getting it. Hopefully, uh, the, the, the luck is in the coin over here, guys. Whatever. We're going on a tangent. You guys know I'm a big Strickland guy. Um, and I, it's hard to pick Pahea. Extremely competitive fight. Almost a 50-50. I'll ride Pahea, and I hate that I'm riding with him, but it is what it is. Sean Strickland, get that W, my man. Let's keep running up the card. Co-main event time. Alexander the Great Volkanovsky versus Max Blessed Holloway. What's better than Blessed, baby? I think Volkanovsky is better than Blessed. The Great is better than Blessed. I think that uh, Alexander Volkanovsky is going to take him out again. I do. I'm picking him. I'm riding with Alexander Volkanovsky to win. And I say it's going to be another competitive-ass decision where there's not a ton of damage worn on either side, but just a little bit more successful moments for Volk. I think he wins the fight going later. <coughs> Excuse me. Max Holloway probably takes the first round again, maybe the second, and then Volk wins three, four, five. It's hard as, as a fan of both guys. Like, I really want to see both of them do extremely well, but I'm picking Volkanovski to win his decision. I do think he gets it done again. We'll look at them on the scales here. There is Max Holloway, looks shredded, ready to go. Intense look in his eyes. There's Volkanovski, who I believe is like the, the new GSP, the fucking Terminator. He looks to be made of stone at this point in incredible shape. Alexander Volkanovski, I don't see losing at 145 right now unless it's a controversial decision. But I'm riding with Volkanovski to win a fair decision. But look at the lines here. Volkanovski, favorite, minus 175. Holloway, plus 175. If there's going to be a robbery on the card, it's going to be Max Holloway getting a split decision win over uh, Volkanovski this time in a fight that is this close but deserves to go towards Volk. I think we're going full. Fight goes distance, but I wouldn't bet on it. I don't really love the betting side here unless maybe you're touching Volk, but like it's going to go distance, and, I, and we've been looking at the judging lately, and it's been weird. Maybe... Maybe hold off. Maybe say fight goes distance, but minus 200. I don't, I don't like the tag. Let's see. Holloway to win by a decision, plus 305. Volkanovski to win a decision, plus 110. I mean, there's more upside on Max Holloway. But I'm picking Volkanovski to win. I am. I'm sticking with my gut. I'm sticking with my guy. I, I actually do believe on paper he, he looks like he's going to win too. I think he's going to go 3-0 against Max. I just have a really weird feeling about a decision here going the Holloway side, even if it deservingly goes towards Volk. And then most people, because Holloway has a ton of support, are going to be totally cool with that controversial decision. We'll see what happens. Next fight is our main event. Make sure you guys smash the like button if you haven't and subscribe to the channel. It is Israel Adesanya and Jared Cannonier. The pick is Adesanya all week. It's still Adesanya. Jared Cannonier is going to come and try to make it a fight. You can tell the intensity at the face-offs, the handshake. It's real. It's time. Like the, These guys are, are ready for one another. And I think Jared Cannonier is he's ready for this moment. He seems to be. 
But Adesanya is such a technical striker, so good from range, so hard to hit. He's not going to be taken down here by Jared Cannonier. I think Adesanya is going to pick him apart and stop him in the third round. I think this is Adesanya with another fight that builds the excitement back. Because let's be honest, lately Adesanya has been winning these decisions and not bad fights, not bad fights, but not great fights. He needs a moment here. And I think Jared Cannonier is going to give it to him by trying really to go for it and bringing the best out of Israel. So I will go Israel Asanya win. I'm going to go third round knockout for him over Jared Cannonier. We'll look at the fighters on the scales here. There is Cannonier shredded and ready to rock. There is Adesanya in good shape as well. Can't see that nipple there, but we don't know what's going on. We do see a little French manicure on uh, Adesanya. Quite interesting. Quite quite interesting look for Izzy, but whatever he wants to do, whatever makes him happy. Minus 427 for Israel Adesanya. Jared Cannonier plus 410. The lines are extremely wide. This is like a Dagestani line here. Over two and a half, minus 200, minus 170. Under four and a half, minus 110. What's Izzy by KO? Let's just go Adesanya KO. Plus 163 best value, Adesanya by KO. It's okay. I do think he's going to get it done a little bit later towards like third and fourth round. Let's see. Do we have a dual round prop or anything? Uh, Adesanya wins in rounds three, four, plus 550. Give me that one as a Hail Mary play if you have it available. Maybe touch that one with a light sprinkle. Uh, because I do think he's going to get Cannonier out of there around three and four. Going to be a great one. I can't wait for this fight. I can't wait for the card. Those are the official picks after seeing each fighter on the scale. I want to bring up the parlays. Let's parlay something up. Let's get, let's get us a little parlay action. Who do I want? If I'm bringing a parlay and I want to feel good about it. I want to feel real good about it. I think Muniz is a true lock. I think Adesanya wins. But that just gives you minus 170. That's terrible. If you want to add in O'Malley, these are big favorites, but now it's about plus 109. If you take O'Malley out and you're like, listen, I, I want to add in an over. Maybe you go over 2.5 here, plus 143. Muniz, Adesanya, and over 2.5 for Lawler and Barbarena. You also add in Bricas Duplessis, brings you to plus 304. You say, give me the sugar show as well, plus 430. Can we go nuts with this? How crazy are we going to go? Let, let's see how crazy we end up going. I'm going to go over in this fight. Brings me to plus 620 if we go over here. I don't know if there's anybody else I really want to add into the slate here. We can get risky territory and add in Ian Gary to bring us to plus 1,000. Plus 1,031 if we had him in. You don't want Gary. Maybe you added Jalen Turner, plus 1,100. Well, you know what? Let's add both in for the hell of it. Plus 1,786. The true Hail Mary trying to snipe the hell out of it right here with the Muniz, Adesanya, the over two and a half um, in the Macy Barber fight, the over two and a half in the Lawler fight, Sean O'Malley, Dricas Duplessis, Jalen Turner, Ian Gary. This is an ultimate Hail Mary style of play. I do think Volkanovski wins, but I'm telling you, I'm scared to put him in a parlay. Scared to I scare I'm scared to have him as a lock or anything like that because I think Volk is, is Max is a live dog. Volk should win, but Max is a live dog, and the odds, looking how they are, we're in Vegas, brother. Scorecards come out, close decision. We've been seeing it all the time. You can say no, you can say no, but most of us know. We know, and if you know, you know. Max is a legit chance to win this fight, whether he wins it truly inside of the cage or if the judges declare him the winner i think he's very live so if you want to attack a max holloway dog play let's say you add it in just for the hell of it plus 4897 maybe you have max holloway as a dog attack maybe play him by decision what is holloway by decision now now i'm gonna just look at it pure betting curiosity here holloway to win by a decision is plus 305 best value it's not great but I do think Holloway has a legit chance to win that decision. But I'm picking Volkanovski as a legit winner. But it, maybe not what the judges think. Overall, UFC 276, an amazing card. I will be live for the entire thing. So make sure to tune in to that fight companion. I hope you guys enjoyed another breakdown. Make sure to smash the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn those post notifications on and share the video as well. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you don't have anything to say, but you just enjoy the content, drop a W in the chat for your boy. Much love, my people, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace, everybody.